Hello and welcome to this online Smart School Councils CPD. Uh, this uh, training is titled Action Teams, Launching and Maintaining. My name is Sam, I'm Head of Programmes for Smart School Councils and I'm here with Greg. Do you want to introduce yourself, Greg? Hi everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Yes, yeah, so I'm Greg and uh, the founder at Smart School Councils and thanks very much for, for watching this video. We hope, find, hope you find it helpful. Thanks, Greg. So yeah, um, I, hopefully in this training, what we'll cover is all of the burning questions you've got about action teams and how they fit into your program and how they might work in your school. So let me share with you what the aims of this training are. Uh, we are going to sort of welcome into yourself, which I've hopefully we've done. Uh, Greg is going to just take a bit of a sort of um, an overall overview, I guess, of what action teams are for a bit of a reminder if we need them. And then when once we've reminded ourselves of what action teams are, we're going to look at how you launch them, what the key sort of uh, elements are to launching, how to keep the momentum up when you have launched them and you're going up through the academic year and then we will sort of reflect on some of the uh, experiences of our member teachers and bring in their questions to answer as we go along and hopefully those will be the sorts of questions that you've been thinking about or are thinking about now. So hopefully that makes sense. Greg, let's start with what are action teams? Sure, so let's start with a quote which I think, <clears throat> excuse me, um, sort of portrays or, or gives you a bit of picture of what an action team could or should be. So here's a quote from Tracy Thompson who says that all children across the school have the opportunity to be part of an action team. We have had lots of mixed age action teams, including an action team who decided to tidy up the key stage one outdoor area. This action team was lead, led by two year five pupils, but the other members of the team were mainly year one pupils who were then supported by all children. So we can see a lot of important elements there about um, action teams that are open to anyone. Um, they can be, they, they support young people to explore their own views and interests and it, it can and hopefully involves, to, involves pupils mixing with one another who don't usually do so. So that's a useful quote to kick off with and I think it's also useful to see, to, to see where they sit as part of the Smart School Council model. So um, Obviously, we've got the class meeting. So that's probably, you probably understand that fairly well. So the, the class meetings happen across the school, really short, regular, snappy class meetings um, led by pupils about a big question. And if you'd like some help with that, then do get in touch. Um, but that's what class meetings are. The communication teams, the, the sort of leadership group who is going to pick the questions and help to run the model. And then we come to the action teams, what we're talking about today. And those are, like we said with Tracy's quote, is they're open to anyone. And those are the small groups of young people who will take forward and create change. And they can be running their own projects that can be big or small, can be permanent or short term. They can last for only a, a short time. And it's really the active part of the Smart School Council model. So you might have a, a, a communication team picking a question, class meetings, everyone discussing a question, and then an action team taking the results of that question forward. So that's hopefully gives you a sense of where it fits. And just to give you a kind of proper de definition as well, so what are they? Pupil-led initiatives to create change or share passion can be about anything and started by any pupil in the school. So a real move away from the traditional school council with a small group who probably decide and do most things, we say, everyone's got interests and passions why can't we help to support them to explore them so all you need to set one up is an idea you need some friends to help you and a staff sponsor and all the resources that you um, need to set them up are in the members area of the website so um, we've got like a i would i want to suggest a, an action team form which you can um you can download there so please feel free to access those and here's a, uh, a, a an image or a, a tweet of one of our favorite action teams from Stopsley Primary the animal rescue team who spent play and lunch time today working as a worm ambulance to place worms in safe places so um, what's you know it's, it's an, you know this is important to young people themselves and when they when they find it uh, important and when they have passion for an idea then that's when they're going to commit to doing something and, and making change so that that um that the, the feeling that it can be a big or small idea a club activity or a campaign um is is important so yeah great example there from stopsley primary 
Greg, sorry, can I just ask you a question? Because I just want to build on that. For, um, often what our teachers might say, or I think what the teachers will come to, is this idea that action teams have to be something that's really big or has to be something focused on a campaign or making a significant change in the curriculum. So do you want to just spend, a, I know you've mentioned it slightly with your example there, but I think it's useful for us to comment on like what the diversity of action teams can really be about and why it's not just about these big momentous changes. Yeah, so we, we, we do like those big changes if, they, if, if that's what young people are interested in. But also many of the most successful action teams are young people getting together to share an interest. So, for example, you, you had the example from uh, Stopsley Primary there, who, um, you know, pupils who, who are interested in animal welfare. We also have action teams which made up of pupils who really like uh, particular books or, for example, Harry Potter. We want to get together, share an interest, and and you know, and there's and and we should be supporting that. We we shouldn't always say you know these these need to be huge changes in the school. So sometimes they can be kind of activity led or almost kind of clubs. Um, and we've got we've got some more examples of that um, clubs which can have more of a sort of student run feel um, rather than a teacher running them. Um, and yes, yeah, so we we like to support small tangible ideas um, and that are kind of genuinely led by young people and the heart of that is giving them the ability and freedom to pick what the topic is that they want to, to do. Great, brilliant, yeah, thank you. Uh, so why are they important then, these action teams? So, um, yeah, so which, what we're talking about in terms of, in terms of the, the value of these, these teams is really is, is helping to give leadership leadership opportunities to more pupils so not just the ones who might always typically put themselves forward and we find with some of those activity based teams um, that actually that's where you do get some maybe quieter or less confident pupils coming forward and also it supports young people to be learning about social action to be having an idea and sharing a passion and trying to change something in in their world um, and and trying to shape that world around them, you know, it's 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 about helping them to identify what could make their lives or their schools better, even in a really small way. And I think that's really that's really the heart of what we're trying to do. Um, so sorry, that's my phone going. Uh, I will. Sorry, that's not great. Um, so then, and, and of course, like we've talked about this a little bit, but how do they link to the other two parts of the model? Well, ideas for action teams are quite often collected by by class meetings so an example is um, a class meeting uh, question that's do you think we should have a water fountain in another water fountain in the school so then if you've got a big amount of support for the for a new water fountain then and you've got some pupils who want to do something about that then you, you would probably create a, a temporary action team which would look into the prices of water fountains, where's the best place to, to, to um, have it, do a bit of an investigation into the areas of high footfall in the school. Um, that's an example of a, a kind of an action team coming out of a class meeting. Um, and also the, the communication team have a role in reviewing those action teams and proposals. So is there duplication? Do we already have a water fountain uh, um, action team? So, you know, they, they, they should keep an eye on that. And there's also an important role for the comms team to be supporting and just nudging and, and helping those the, the action teams. So they, they should know, well, at the moment, we've got four action teams and this is the lead pupil for each of those. And I'm going to just check in with those every those pupils every couple of weeks just to see how they're getting on. So, yeah, there's a real role for there's a real um, a relationship between the other two parts of the models it's the the action teams don't act in isolation yeah that's a good point um so just reminded by another question greg that we get quite frequently from teachers and that i think this links to um the class meetings and the type of ideas that get submitted through them like how do we um how do we get young people to understand the limits of action teams for example um, you know, lots of often teachers what they say things like, oh, they get an action team or an idea around wanting a swimming pool or we want vending machines or lockers in school. Like, um, how do we go about what approaches should we be taking as teachers when it comes to sort of managing those expectations a little bit? Mm, yeah, so I think it's um, 
I think it's important to to give some freedom to the young people and and kind of you know you want a, you want a swimming pool. Okay, well, you, why don't you come back to me with a proposal on how we're going to do that, and and helping young people like because obviously that's that's probably going to be quite a difficult thing to achieve, um, but just helping them to explore it a little bit more so when school when pupils uh, are suggesting a new action team they there's there's a, a worksheet on the website which will help them to kind of think through well what do i need for this what supporters do, do i can i find in the school who's my teacher sponsor um and i think that that pre-thinking and supporting that um is a good way to start to knock out some of those ideas that probably can't happen. Um, yeah, is there anything you want to add on that, Sam? Well, I, yeah, I agree with all of that. I think it's also to say that um, one, of, one, of the, one of the things that can be so powerful about the learning process of, of a leadership role is that realization that you come to yourself that maybe your idea isn't possible as opposed to somebody telling you that it's not possible or that it can't happen. And if you go through that investigatory process and you come to that conclusion yourself, what you've done there is learn some great things. You've, you've had a go, you've developed some fantastic skills and you've also got that sense of um, your place in the world around you as opposed to being told what's gonna happen next. So yeah, that's why I'd say to support those things. And I think that's often how we answer that question when it comes up from our member teachers. So that's a really good uh, sort of um, intro and reminder of what action teams are. And thank you for that, Greg. So often many of us who will be watching this video are in the position where we're considering how and when we should be launching them. And that's what we're going to look at now. And we've got three tips. Uh, this is the first tip for launching action teams. And that's not to do it too soon. One of the things that Greg said there in his introduction with linking the action teams to the other elements of the program is how the class meetings and how the communications team are so vital to both supporting and helping to, to maintain the action team elements. And if those two parts aren't yet up and running, it's too soon. So wait until you've got an established communications team before launching your action teams. Wait until your class meetings have been running fairly regularly. Uh, everybody knows how and, and why they work and that they've also generated a bank of ideas that you could potentially use as your launch for the action teams later on. And then that's the third part of this tip is then to launch them when those two models are in place and the structure is embedded at the beginning of a new term and have a dedicated moment to that that says, right, this is the beginning of summer term. We've done really well with our comms team and our class meetings for the previous terms. And now we want to look at how we fit action teams in and we're gonna focus on that now. So that's tip one. Uh, tip two is uh, all about what I've just described, so the assemblies and how important they are. So um, often assemblies, I think, or action teams run best when they have this sort of prominent place in the school's image or in the school view, so to speak. So how can we generate interest and engagement? Well, we can launch the idea specifically in a special assembly and call out and say, right, what, what ideas have you got? Share some ideas you have an action team. Who wants to take these forward? Who's interested in setting up an action team? Um, what we can also do is use regular slots in assemblies to announce new action teams. So, you know, student A from class whatever um, is interested in setting up a, um, a club that support that is about sort of puzzles or is about sort of escape rooms because they really like the maths behind all of that. Are there any students across the, the, the whole school population who would be interested in joining and getting involved? And that is a way of get, generating interest and getting in a lot of engagement through it. And then another way of using assemblies is to share success stories. So when you have one or two action teams, um, you want to make sure that uh, the rest of the school population knows about them and knows that either the difference that they've made or the enjoyment that participants get from it and the leadership that's been uh, sort of undertaken by students in the school so they can see that and that's a mirror to them that says oh well i can do that too so that's our, our second tip is how to use assemblies to support your action teams and then tip three is is a kind of it's about looking at what you're already doing as a school it, it is 
uh, universally the case when the school joins the Smart School Council program that they're joining us having already done lots of really good things whether that's having an eco council or library monitors or a buddy scheme whatever it is like you will be doing lots of things that are pupil-led initiatives across the school but what they might benefit from is becoming part of one system where they can be supported by the class meetings and maybe asking a question one week that supports their work or through the communications team in helping to manage their sort of their workload so to speak and one of the ways that you can bring them into the system is by rebranding them as action teams so that they fit into this whole school system of pupil voice so that's our other tip um, and it, I guess that doing this will also allow you to sort of have quick wins with action teams that are part of that sort of mirroring of success that will drive other people's involvement. So those are our, our three broad tips. Now, Greg, one of the questions that comes up often when we talk about launching is a question about staff and how to get other staff members uh, feeling like they want to uh, get involved and feeling like they're not being uh, overworked if, if they do want to get involved in sponsoring an action team. Do you want to spend a moment just answering that question? Yeah, so I think the first thing to remember is that uh, is your first point really important. So don't rush into action teams. If you don't have your class meeting or comms team set up, then don't worry about it. That's the first step. Um, then if you do have those things working well, then it's, it might be slightly easier to persuade some staff. Um, the other thing that you can do is to make it very clear that it's not going to be in an overwhelming system of 16 to 18 action teams every, every term. Um, but you might limit the number of action teams um, that happen each term. So you might say this term we've got three, three action teams and the best ideas and, and the most energetic pupils who want to work on them um, we'll be doing those action teams and therefore we only need three or four members of staff to uh, support those action teams so it keeps it manageable. The other thing you can do is open it up to people who aren't teachers so you might have office managers who are interested in, in gardening supporting that, you might have TAs who want to support and take on another role in the, in the school in a different kind of setting um, so that might broaden out the number of people who um, who get involved. Also, you might want to think about people's interests. So with the Harry Potter club that I mentioned, the idea, um, like I'm sure there'll be a member of staff in most schools who is a big fan of Harry Potter, like, like myself. Um, so it's a bit of kind of gentle matching between, oh, well, you've got these pupils who are interested in this, why don't we have a think about who, who might be good to that, good to match up with that. And then the final thing is about, um, uh, linking with subject areas. So if there's a maths based uh, action team, then I'm sure it would be of interest to the maths team or department or teacher or somebody who helps with that to be supporting that, to be helping young people who are genuinely interested in sharing a passion for maths to, to explore and develop that further. So yeah, that would be my thoughts. Yeah, I think they're, they're all really useful thoughts. Um, and I guess what I would sort of uh, add to that, um, and it's gone out of my head entirely, Greg, what I was about to say, that's good, isn't it? Um, oh, no, I was going to say that um, often the idea, the, the idea of, of um, we, the number of people that we have in school is really important. And I think the other thing that we can say to them in, in sort of persuading them to get involved is that it's not up to them whether the action team succeeds or fails. It's not up to them to lead it either. Um, it's the pupils leading them themselves, they're them themselves. So what sponsorship looks like from a staff member's perspective is sometimes as low, uh, low stakes as providing a classroom and saying, I'm gonna be marking here for half an hour at lunchtime. You can come in and I'll have general oversight of what you're doing, but it's not up to me to drive this. It's up to you guys themselves. These are pupil-led initiatives. So that's the other thing I think to remember. Okay, so uh, that's launching. And then I guess what we wanted to talk about next is sort of man maintaining action teams. Like how do we keep my momentum up? How do we keep them sustainable? We've mentioned a couple of these so far, but it's good to spend some time on them as individual points. So firstly, um, and I guess this is if you're watching this training and you've tried to do action teams before and maybe they haven't gone very well, this is an important point for you. 
like it's okay to relaunch action teams if you need to um there's no harm in that at all because it you know Lots of messages get drowned out across the school year, and that's okay. You've got new cohorts of students starting each year. And um, as long as you've gone through the process of getting your communication team working really well, having your action team, uh, sorry, your class meetings running regularly, then you're in a great position to say, right, we're going to try this again. And we're going to try it by launching through an assembly and having regular slots to update everybody. So feel free to relaunch if you need to. That will definitely help. The second tip about maintaining is as Greg's alluded to already like it's okay to have a limited number of slots available for action teams across a half term or a term and um, you can decide on with your communication team how many that should be and um, and then I guess if that number is say sort of four or five whatever it might be then you can have an idea of where you can go to get support from your your colleagues to make them to, to have that sponsorship, which might mean that they're going to be more successful, um, uh, rather than having sort of 16 and having to rush around the school and look for as many adults as possible. And I guess the last bit is, is can be a bit controversial, I guess, but I think it's okay to mention is that like it's all right to be selective initially to demonstrate what a good action team looks like in terms of the ideas for what they could be about. Remember. The whole point of a smart school council is that every young person gets their voice heard and can lead change and they're getting their voice heard and they're leading change through their participation in the class meetings through participation in the comms team like and they hopefully will also get participation in action teams but in that initial period if you and your comms team are reviewing the applications and saying right we know this one is more likely to be successful because either its goal is easier to manage or it's something that we've got the structure in place to do then push that one forward initially and share it as a success story that's a, that's a smart thing to do and it's an okay thing to do in that period of getting them up and running and showing everybody else how the, um, how they work so those are our, I, oh sorry, you've got one more tip on maintaining as well. And it's a slightly tongue in cheek one by Stand By It, which is like, if you do the launch well and the launch goes well, then maintaining and keeping it sustainable is going to be something that will come naturally from this point. So we've got another question at this point, Greg, if that's okay. One of the questions that we often get around this is how, um, how, teachers use action teams and it was a question we had recently which said like how do we get action teams focused on helping the community and this was somebody who had launched their action teams had a relatively good sort of experience of running them but wanted to go like that next step with how they use them uh, and and branching out into the community have you got any thoughts on that yes yeah, so i think the when so the the starting point for me is that it's um it should be young people who are passionate and really interested in the subject and they're the ones who who, who are going to put the effort in going to make the change and but also the, that question i think speaks to a, an interesting kind of almost challenge to that is that well if everybody wants to do a certain type of club or activity then it might be a quite limited experience and actually we do want to be suggesting new types of in of, of kind of uh, experiences to broaden young people's minds and, and what they want to do um, so I think that's so that's great to kind of start to nudge people a certain way but I think the best approach is to make it less abstract so if you say to a year six or a year nine people do you want to set up a community action group um, particularly if they're you know a primary pupil then community can be quite an abstract thing to understand from a kind of starting point and i i would um, i think some of the best action teams actually make some make it a very kind of tangible point so for example the community action team at burnage academy for boys in, in in manchester they they started with a road safety campaign which was involving uh, measuring the speed of cars outside their school um and and so you start with that and you start to think well actually you know you have some pupils who are very keen on finding out whether whether schools are sticking uh, what whether drivers are sticking to the law as they drive past and, and when they find mm -hmm. it they don't then you've got a really kind of interesting campaign to start which is going to affect the community so um i think it's 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 starting with kind of 
practical, tangible ways of improving community, be it kind of road safety or litter or, and, and then setting up, a, trying to encourage a curiosity in, well, if we have a litter picking team or a litter investigation team, how, how can we find out how well we do in terms of the school and picking up our litter? Um, and, and just kind of supporting the pupils to be, or encouraging them to have a kind of a tangible, practical hook through which you can then promote the idea of community or something um, which might be a bit abstract in the, in the kind of uh, when you first hear it. So yeah, that would be my advice on, on, on trying to steer young people towards a really important aspect of what new action teams could be. Yeah, I think that's a, a, that's a really good point. And, and another question, I guess, that links to this that um, often comes up is we make this connection between the class meetings and action teams and how um, they support each other. And uh, we recently had a question from a teacher that said, OK, well, what sort of questions are, the, are good at generating action teams? Um, and when they, they ask this question, I kind of find it hard to, to give a specific, this is a good example, but I think, um, and what I would say in reply, and then I'll come to yours, Greg, is to say that, um, that, that, that that connection between the two is one that is one that can be encouraged and can be stoked a little bit. So if you've got a question in your class meeting that is about what we can do to um, help uh, the environment more. And one of the options that may have come out of that class meeting is something along the lines of, okay, well, well fewer people should drive to our school and that will help us to cut down on our carbon emissions as a, as a community. Um, and that's a result and you think, okay, great. Now we know that, that as a school, that's what we want to happen, um, but it doesn't happen by itself. There needs to be an action. It needs to be some change that's created. If we don't drive to school as much anymore, what are we going to do instead? And there is a good example of when an action team could be created that says, right, okay, well, we are going to be the action team that encourages people to cycle to school instead. And we're going to do campaign or we're going to do leafleting or we're going to um, make sure that we've got the right equipment in school to allow us to cycle in instead. And I think that demonstrates the link between asking good questions in the class meeting tool and then them leading through to action team ideas. Was there anything you want to add into that, Greg? Just, to, um, just two things. So firstly, not all your class meeting questions should be de uh, geared towards making action teams. Uh, that's okay. You know, uh, you know, you don't have to have uh, an absolute link between those two things that you could be doing kind of topical questions or current affairs questions. That's okay too. Um, but if, you, if it is an action style, action team style question, then it can be very simple like that one I mentioned earlier. You know, do you think we should have an extra water fountain in school? Uh, school says yes action team sets up to explore and investigate what that should look like. So I, I, I think there's certain questions that lend themselves very well to it. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Okay, folks, um, so to finish off, we just wanted to share some really good examples of action teams. We thought that would be a good idea. Um, so if we go into them, uh, let's reflect a little bit on what we've said. So successes, here are some. Um, so we've got examples from Hillview Primary School, who've got Super Dolls action team, who are responsible for organizing the play resources at lunchtime. Uh, and I think we can all imagine, I'm sure, of young people who would be really good at that kind of sort of always looking for jobs, always looking for things to help the teachers. And this is an example of how they could do it. Um, Greg mentioned earlier on Burnage um, and their community action group here. You can see them in action. Um, in their, their school is quite close to a busy road. And, and I think that they're out enforcing sort of safe driving practices, um, including a speeding gun, which is a very impressive thing for them to get a hold of. Um, some other examples of, of action teams we'll see here um, with a uh, Happy to Sad Club um, for, uh, for sort of, uh, sort of, I guess, like a mental health approach action team um, with sort of buddy benches and rainbow benches that will sort of allow young people to support others who are having a tough time. And then an action team towards the end, um, which is about sort of a, a club. Village Academy are very good at doing clubs uh, around creative writing and a young person who's really sort of interested in that wants to share it with them. Um, those are another good example as well. No, I think we need to skip the next slide, Greg, because it might be a mistake on it. Um, and go into, I guess, this question. 
which is a question that we want to pose to you, which is with those examples, what are you going to do following this CPD to try and give action teams either a more prominent place in your school or um, how you're going to integrate them into what you're already doing? Anything you want to add at this point, Greg? Yeah, and I would just say that if your answer to this question is, I'm going to wait, I'm not going to do anything right now because I've got other things to do in terms of setting up class meetings or improving my communication team, then that's a completely a, like valid uh, response. Um, waiting is okay with action teams um, if you're kind of towards the start of setting up your smart school council. If you're not, then yeah, hopefully you've, you've got a kind of taken an idea forward from this, but um, waiting is okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, and from some discussions we've had with students recently, one of the things that they take they took away from this was also how to use assemblies as a way of supporting and sharing and celebrating what action teams are up to, which is a really good idea as well. Um, and also, I guess the final message from us is that you know we're here to support you with this too. And there are a number of ways in which you can reach out to support for support when it comes to taking forward some of the things we've discussed in this training or um, any questions that we maybe haven't answered in this training, but you would like answered and where to bring those questions. So always there's the membership email for Smart School Councils that we will respond to. If you're not already a, a member of our Facebook group, our members Facebook group, I would encourage you to go and become a member of it because it's a really valuable resource for not only accessing Smart School Council staff, but fellow teachers who are passionate about pupil voice and uh, have lots of experience in running Smart School Councils in their school. Um, and then there are our members meetups that happen on Facebook on YouTube and we send out email reminders about those and um, when we're doing them, what the subject's going to be about and how you can get involved in those. So final word from us, Greg. Cool, okay, yeah, that's, um, I hope you found that useful. Um, and if, yeah, like Sam said, if there's anything, uh, any support or questions that you've got after that, then please do get in touch with us. And also we'd love to hear from you if you've got some uh, successful action teams running and, and love to hear what they're, how they're going and what they're up to because quite often the range of these action teams is, 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 is really, really big. So um, we would love to hear from you and uh, hope you've uh, found this very useful. So from Sam and I, thank you very much and have a lovely day. Bye. Thanks guys, bye.